Hello, welcome back to our beginner's animation course. Here we have our jack-in-the-box model. You should have yours uh, within the scene files that have come with this course. And in the previous video, we set up all of our pieces so that they're ready for rigging for the animation process. We have our box, our lid, the crank, Jack's head, and then the body or the neck. So we're going to have a little bit of an introduction to skeletons in this video. We're going to do a very simple skeleton, nothing too crazy, uh, just to kind of introduce the concept of a skeletal structure to be used for animating in Maya. So what we're going to do is go to the rigging module and skeleton menu and we have a create joints command. So when I click this command I have this little crosshair for my cursor and anytime I click, I'll just show you for example, it places this little circular structure called a joint and as I click like more you'll see more joints appear and these kind of pyramid shapes or triangular shapes appear between the joints called bones so once I have a structure that I like for example once I'm done placing my joints I can hit enter to kind of finalize the creation of this particular skeletal chain of joints my selection goes back to the first joint that I made. The first joint that you place in a skeleton is considered the root or the parent of the joint chain. When I move that joint, it moves the entire skeleton. When you move down the skeleton to a joint further down the chain, you'll notice that as I select this joint, the joint before it is no longer highlighted. And as I move this joint, that first joint, the parent joint, is left behind. So I can move this joint like this, and you see this joint over here stays put. And I can do the same for this joint. As I move this one, the two previous stay put, and then I can move this last one like this. If you think of it as shoulder, elbow, wrist, and then this could be like your hand or something. So if my character, for example, if it has a hand, and his shoulder is here. Whenever you rotate your shoulder, your arm all rotates with it. If you can just kind of picture this, I'll hide the grid for now. So as I rotate the shoulder, my entire arm rotates. And as I rotate or bend my elbow, the wrist and hand go with it. And if I rotate my wrist, the hand will go with it. So that's kind of how skeletal chains work, and that's why they're primarily used for character work. So I'm going to delete this, like so. So what we're going to do is create a simple chain of joints running up the spine of this jack-in-the-box to create the animation of the jack popping out of the box and kind of wobbling around. There are no arms or legs or fingers or toes or anything like that we have to worry about. This is just a simple kind of snaky uh, structure of the neck of this jack-in-the-box. So I'm going to hold down the space bar for my hotbox, left click on the Maya name here in the front and go to the front view. So now I have a front orthographic view of my jack-in-the-box. I'm going to show the grid. So you can see my jack-in-the-box is right there along this grid line. So now I can go with, in my rigging module, go to skeleton create joints and just to be sure I'm going to go into the options and reset the tool just to make sure that all my default settings are in place. I'm going to place a joint here at the base of the jack-in-the-box neck. I'm just going to create a series of joints like so and kind of make them a little bit evenly spaced. You don't have to be perfect about it. And then the last joint will be right here at the base of the head. And once I have all those joints placed, I can hit enter to kind of finalize that creation of this joint chain. If it's hard to see when wireframe, I can hit 5 for shaded view. And then I can go over here to shading x-ray joints. If I turn that on, then my joints are visible through my mesh, like so. So it makes it easier to see and select. If your joints are too big or small, you can go to display, animation, joint size, and here I have this slider. I can increase or decrease the size 
of joints in my scene. So get a size that you're comfortable with. So with this chain of joints in place, I'm going to create what's called an IK handle. IK stands for inverse kinematics. Now inverse kinematics as a whole is a little bit more advanced topic. We're not going to go into it in a lot of detail, but we're going to kind of introduce the concept of what inverse kinematics or IK is. If I go up here to skeleton, create IK handle, there's also create IK spline handle, and the create IK spline handle is what we're going to be doing. So first, just to demonstrate what IK does, I'm going to go to skeleton, create IK handle, not the spline handle. We're going to be using the spline handle primarily for this project. But before I deal with the spline handle, I want to show you just the standard IK handle. So create IK handle, and then it wants me to, if you look down here, it says left mouse button to pick start joint for handle. So I need to click the starting joint, which would be this, my joint down here at the base in this example. And then it says left mouse button to pick end joint or end effector. So the end joint will be the one at the very end at the top of the chain. And now that I've created the IK handle, you'll see my joints turn this purple color. That's because I have the IK handle selected. You'll see here in the channel box, IK handle 1 is selected. And as I move this IK handle, my joint chain is moving with it. You'll notice the geometry is not moving. And that's because we have not set up for the geometry for the jack-in-the-box itself to move with the joints yet. That's going to come in the next step. But by moving this IK handle around, I'm getting the joint chain to move. And now if you remember in our example with the shoulder and the elbow and the wrist, we when we moved the shoulder, the elbow and wrist and hand all moved with it. When we bent the elbow, the wrist and hand moved with it. And then when we rotated the wrist, the hand moved with it. But now what we're doing is if you kind of think of this as an arm, I'm actually moving the hand over here. I'm moving the hand to move the arm and not the shoulder. So this is why it's called inverse. You're doing the reverse of what you would do in your standard joint chain. I'm using this handle to grab the end of the arm, for example, and moving it as a whole. Doing it the other way, the shoulder, elbow, wrist way, is called forward kinematics, where we're rotating these joints, we're animating these joints forward down the chain. This is inverse kinematics, where we're grabbing the end of the chain to adjust or rotate the joints before it in the chain. Now this particular IK handle is a standard handle that would be used in arms or legs of a character and we're not going to be doing that for this particular project but I wanted to use that handle to kind of show how it works in general. So now I'm back to normal and I've undone the IK handle so the IK handle is gone now. So now we're going to go into what a spline IK handle is or an IK spline handle. So go to skeleton, create an IK spline handle and we'll do the same thing. We'll click on the bottom or the first joint and then click on the top or the end joint, like so. We get this handle again. I no longer am able to move it like I could with the previous IK handle. If I press the 4 key, and it's going to be a little bit difficult to see. Let me change the background color. If I hit Alt-B, I can kind of cycle through different background colors. And here's a black background, which I wouldn't normally work with, but you can see like this green highlighted line going through the center of my joint chain, that is a curve. So a curve has been created through the middle of my joint chain. If I try and select it, sometimes it can be difficult to select. If it is difficult for you to select it, like I'm not having luck right now, up here next to all of the little magnet icons for the snapping, if you go to the left of that, there's this little arrow here. If I click it, it expands these selection masks. You may have these displayed in your UI already, that's okay. What these do is allow you to mask your selection. So for example, right now, every time I mouse over this and grab a marquee selection around this, I'm selecting the joint. The second button here is selecting joints. If I click it to turn it off, I can no longer select joints. So now if I mouse over this, I'm now selecting geometry and the curve and so on. If I don't want to select geometry, this little kite shape or diamond shape, if I click it, I turned off geometry selection. So now when I mouse over this, I'm selecting the curve. You'll see here now I have curve 1 selected. So if you have difficulty selecting something that's inside other things, you can mask those other things out 
especially if it's a different thing. If you're trying to select geometry within geometry, you'll have to have a little bit more finesse about it. But if I'm trying to select a curve that's inside a geometry that has a joint chain running through the middle of it, I can turn off the joints and geometry masks up here, and then I can select my curve. So now I'm going to Alt-B back to our original background color. So now I have that curve selected within my joint chain. So with the curve selected, if I right click out in space, I can choose my curves components. The main component we're looking at is control vertex right here. If I mouse over control vertex, it brings up the components of that curve, which are these little purple dots. If you're finding it hard to see, we can use different background colors to try and make things a little bit easier to see. But there's a dot right here. If I marquee select around it, I've selected this dot. So with these CVs selected, I can move them with my move tool and adjust the position of the joints because I'm adjusting that I'm adjusting the shape of the curve running through the joint chain. So the curve controls what the joint chain is shaped like. If I change the shape of the curve, the joint chain also becomes also changes shape. I can use my arrow keys to move through the curve to grab different points along the curve. So I can grab this point down here and adjust the shape of the joint chain with this CV or control vertex. This one at the bottom I can move it around like so. I'll undo that. And I can move this one at the end like this. So I'm going to undo all that movement. Like so. So I have this curve running through the middle of my joint chain with my IK spline handle tool. A spline is essentially a curve in 3D space. So this is going to be how we're going to control the Jack in the Box's neck. So because it can be difficult to select that curve because it's inside the joint chain with inside the geometry and it makes it a little bit difficult to just select the curve, we can use what's called a selection handle. So I have the curve selected, and if you are having difficulty selecting the curve, another way of doing that is by using the Outliner. If I go to Windows, Outliner, this, win this little li list of objects shows me everything in within my scene, and I can click on them within the Outliner to select them. So for example, I can select the curve that has been created to easily select it. But if you don't want to use the Outliner all the time, you can select the curve within the Outliner first if you need to, Go to display, transform display, and then selection handles. So now I'm displayed the selection handle for the curve, which is this little plus sign down here. If I click off the curve, I deselected the curve, and I'll hide the grid for now. So with my grid uh, hidden, you can see the little plus sign right here. If I click it and then selected it, it selects the curve. So that can be an easy way of selecting the curve uh, when you are having a difficult time when you're having a difficult time otherwise. So if you want to select the curve easily, and I turn my masks back on, so now geometry and uh, joints are taking, uh, geometry and joints are taking my selection instead of the curve that I want, I can go down here and select this little crosshair, and now I have the curve selected. So the next part is to bind the accordion-shaped neck of the jack-in-the-box to the skeleton so that the skeleton, when it moves, will also move the jack-in-the-box's neck. To do this is to bind the geometry to the skeleton. Another word used to describe that process is to skin it. When you skin the geometry, you're rigging it for movement with a skeleton. So I'm going to select the neck geometry here, and you can rename these objects if you'd like. I've not taken the liberty of doing that yet. Let me go ahead and rename this to be neck, like so. And then hold down the shift key and select the root joint, which is the first joint in the chain of uh, joints that we've created. If I select the root joint, which is joint one in this case, the entire skeleton of joints will highlight green like this. If any of these joints are not highlighted green, that means you've selected the wrong one. For example, if I shift select this one instead of the first one, you'll see that all of these joints are highlighted green except this first one, which means I misclicked the joint I want. So I'm going to select the neck geometry, hold down shift, and select joint one or the root joint of your skeleton. With that selection made in the right order, I can then make sure I'm in the rigging module and go to skin 
bind skin. And in the options, I'm just going to edit, reset settings, and click bind skin. And then the binding process would have been done, which means that the, the geometry now, which you'll see in the channel box here, is locked. All these channels, translate XYZ, rotate XYZ, all these channel inputs are grayed out. They're all gray, this gray color, which means that they are now locked to the skeleton's movement. So if I select my curve and move the curve, it moves the skeleton, which then also moves the geometry. Everything bound by the skeleton is being driven by the curve. Let me undo that movement. And again, like we mentioned before, if we adjust the curve's shape, I'm just going to appear in these selection masks. I'm going to click the joint selection mask, which means I cannot select joints right now. So if I do this marquee selection like this, I'll select the CV instead, the CV of the curve. If I go in the four, press four for wireframe, you'll see the CVs here. I can move them like so and adjusts the shape of the joint chain, which also adjusts the shape of the geometry now since it's been bound together. So by keyframing the movement <laughs> of this uh, joint chain, we can make this jack-in-the-box move around. Undo all that, so back to straight up and down. Now you'll notice if I select this topmost CV of my curve and move it, the head does not travel with the body. Not yet. So what I'm going to do is select the head geometry, and you can, again, we can name these parts appropriately. The head selected. I'm going to shift select that top joint or the last joint in our joint chain. Hold down shift and select. Oh, and I need to turn on my selection mask because right now I'll, but previously I had my joints all masked out so I couldn't select them. So again, select my head geometry first, hold down shift and select my topmost joint there and press the P key, which is the parent key. So now the head has been parented to that joint. So wherever that joint goes, the head will also go. So I'm going to turn off my joint selection mask again, select my curve here in the outliner, right click and choose a control vertex. So as I move this, you'll see how the head moves with the body now. I can use my arrow keys to skip between CVs or control vertices of the curve being used to control the joint chain. I can select this top point and move it around. So now we're pretty much all set for the animation process. We have our skeleton for the neck ready to be animated. We have our crank here, the lid to the box, and our head is attached to the neck of the joint chain. So yeah, we're ready to go. You can save your scene, and I'll see you in the next part to continue the process of animating our Jack in the Box.